Welcome, I'm Karen Lips, president of the Network of Enlightened Women. I'm excited today to be joined by Wendy Dameron, a self-employed tax professional and CFO of Abatis. Wendy is currently on the board of directors of the Palmetto Promise Institute in South Carolina and has been a member of several local nonprofit boards over the years. She's a member of the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants and has also been very active in charitable work through her church and community. Wendy, thank you so much for joining us today and for being our featured Lead Like a Lady speaker. I am so thrilled to be here. I just can't wait to share my story with all you young ladies. And if it can help you or give you any insight, I, I'm happy to do it. Well, I invited Wendy on because we were having a phone call one day and she was sharing her story of her career and how she made a decision um, to cut back on work during a certain season of life. And I thought it was a really powerful story and I really appreciated how you thought about it and how you made that decision. Could you share what you thought you would be doing uh, post-graduation when you were in college and then how your career has, has evolved? Oh, absolutely. So... <laughs> It's funny to think back on it now. Um, I uh, was extremely ambitious, which I, I would say I still am. Um, but I had I, I, I got an internship with Ernst & Young when I was 20 years old. I started uh, you know, working in the Detroit office. I was working um, tax seasons 100 hours a week. And then I was working summers uh, 30 hours a week and going to class full time. So. I would be up at 4.30 every morning to go downtown. And then I'd be up till midnight doing homework every night. And um, I just was uh, just completely, completely career focused. I um, didn't grow up in the greatest area near Detroit. So I, my whole goal in life was like, what do I need to do to kind of get out of here and, and you know, move, move up move and give, you know, myself a better life and maybe my children a better life than what I had. And so I got hired by Ernst & Young through the internship program. So I started working uh, full-time, plus full-time uh, uh, during tax season. It was expected to uh, start at, you know, 50, then the next week goes to 60, 70, 80, and then 100 hours a week. So you can understand it's you're there in the morning before the sun comes up. You're there long after you're there on the weekends. and that 100 hour week period usually would last about six weeks straight. And then you go back down to you know, 40, 50 hours a week after that. And um, anyway, I, I, it just never occurred to me that um, I would ever, you know, I, in my mind, I'm just gonna work, keep doing that until I'm gonna be the best and I'm gonna be partner. And it, at the time there were actually no women partners at Ernst & Young and I was like, I'm just going to be that first female partner. And uh, so anyway, then we got to a point where uh, my husband and I decided we wanted to have children. And it didn't really occur to me um, that that was going to change my life much, you know, very naive. But um, I worked with other women who had children and, you know, they had nannies and they had their pictures on their desk and, you know, they saw them sometimes, you know, sometimes they would go on vacation with them, but they it wasn't that unusual to be called home, leave your family at Disney and be called back. Um, and, you know, in my mind at the time, I was thinking, wow, you're really important to the company if, if they are asking you to do that. So um, I, it didn't, it, it was, it was okay with me. You know, I just was like, that's just the way it was. My, my mother worked. And so I was latchkey kid in the eighties, you know, so it just didn't occur to me. And so we had our, our I had my first child, my son, and um, I tried to do it. And, and Wendy, and, how long had you been um, at the firm before you had your son? Uh, four years. Oh, okay, so you had been, you'd been doing it. It had become part of yeah, your- Yeah, I've been working my way up. I passed yeah. the CPA exam. I, t I studied and passed it the first sitting. And, you know, so I was on my way up and- um, it's a very high pressure environment. It's, you know, a lot of men with stay at home wives, or like I said, women with live-in nannies. And, and at the end of every tax season, they have what you call a Christians and Lions meeting. 
where all the senior staff get together and decide which of the um, lower staff are going to get fired because of course you always need more people during tax season. And so those who underperform, you know, you're getting the boot. So, so it's a very high pressure environment. Um, but I was, you know, I, I was in it. I was, I was like, you know, I'm going to be the best. So anyway, uh, after I had my son, I, I, you know, I, I went back to work. I took him to daycare. My husband and I sort of like, uh, I would drop off, he would pick up, you know, we, we sort of had this arrangement. Um, and uh, after a while, uh, it got just to be so hard. And, and I think part of it was, um, I felt that when I was home with him, I was thinking about work and what was um, piling on my desk and waiting for me when I got back and, and how I was, you know, falling behind. And, and this, these were the days before, you know, cell phones and email and all that. I mean, you had email, but only at work, you know, you didn't have it on your phone or at home. It's so interesting. you didn't have the temptation to always look at your phone when you were home, but then you didn't know uh, how much was waiting on you when you got back. Right. You couldn't sort of kind of keep up with it on your off hours. And so you would get back and there'd be, you know, a stack of files on your chair this tall and all these, you know. So it was sort of like I was just sort of stressed about what was going on there. And then when I was at work, I was thinking about my son and, you know, I hope he's OK. And then he kind of got to that age where he would cry when I would leave him and I would be going out to my car and hearing him cry. And I just was. um I was so torn and, and then there were days where sometimes, you know, they get, they get sick as, you know, when they're babies and um, especially when they're in daycare and that they're in that situation where it's sort of, sort of like a huge Petri dish. And then you have to negotiate, you know, I call that's a nice word, but you have to negotiate with your husband. Who's going to take the day off now because uh, your child is sick. And it's, it sounds terrible when I think back on it, but it was like, we were more concerned about really, um, you know, taking that day off and calling in because your kid is sick, then really, oh, the, the child is sick and not feeling well, because, you know, you don't want to be seen as that person, uh, especially as a woman, as that person who's like, oh, you're just not really dedicated to your career anymore because you have this baby and we really need you and you're not showing up. And so it was just so much um, that after uh, a year, I decided um, I just can't, do this anymore. I just, I, I have to pick something and pick one of these things. And I've already chosen because I've had this child and I miss him desperately. And so um, I had the conversation with my husband that I said, you know, I just need to take some time off to be and just be a mom. And we cut our salary in half. Uh, we went on an extremely tight budget. When I tell people we went, we went out to eat one time per month. That's it. One time per month. So like no Starbucks, no, you know, not, not, my husband packed his lunch to work and uh, I found free things to do. We went to the park, you know, we, we took walks, we, we did, um, uh, we did play groups and things at people's houses, but we found free things to do. And, and until, um, until my husband was able to get, you know, a better job, he was working for the government at the time. So uh, anyway, it was a huge sacrifice and it was very scary. I had never considered being a stay-at-home mom. I didn't know any stay-at-home moms. I mean, our generation, my generation, our moms were like the 70s baby boomers. We were latchkey kids. It was women's empowerment. It was all that. And um, it, I almost felt um, bad that I was late, being lazy or that I was being, you know, almost a traitor to the women's movement. I feel, I feel this is really strange for me to say this now because obviously it was not right. But at the time, I actually had people telling me, you're setting women back decades by just by making this decision. And I just had to say, um, well, I, I have to do what's best for my family. And, and I'm not responsible for all of, all, all of womanhood, you know, here. So um, when I made that decision, when I first started to stay home, well, first of all, um, I went, when I had this conversation with my husband, we were at, out at a restaurant at our, you know, uh, uh, one, well, actually we weren't on that budget yet. So we're out at a restaurant and I started to cry. I was like, I was, I said, I feel like I'm jumping off a cliff here because 
everything I've ever known, everything I've ever thought uh, is different. And I don't know what my life is going to be like now. Um, we had moved to Maryland and I didn't know anybody except for the people that I worked with and my husband. And that was it. So, and like I mentioned, it was before the internet. So I said, I don't even know how I'm going to meet people. I don't even know where the zoo is. I don't know where the park is. And I can't, you know, I can't Google it because there's no Google. So I was just thinking it's going to be me and this baby inside these four walls forever. And, you know, but I, I'm just going to do it and I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to see what we get. But it was, it was a, it was a scary time for me. I, I just didn't, it was like uncharted territory for me. And, and I didn't know if I was ever going to, when I took that step back, I didn't know how I was, or if I was going to be able to get back in at all. So well, Wendy, I appreciate you articulating the emotions around it, sort of that fear and oh, really yeah. uncertainty. Um, when you are on one path, it's very easy to know what's ahead of you, right? Day, yes. month, you knew what was coming. And then switching path, it's it's challenging. What has been the, the bright side of this? Uh, as you look back, and oh, I mean, year, I would not trade that time with my children. I end up subsequently having a daughter too. Um, I would not change that time. I mean, my, my life changed so much for the better. I know people who stayed on that track and they either didn't have children or they didn't raise their own children. They don't, they don't know their own children. Their stress level was so high. I mean, I know women in, in these types of careers where they would, um, work so much. And then the weekends, they would have a migraine all weekend and, you know, and then they would go back to it. And, and, um, I got to spend my days just, um, taking, being with my kids who I just adore. I taught them both to read by the age three, because we were together all the time and we were reading books together and we were talking about letters and letter sounds and, you know, we, we, we just, it was just the greatest time of my life. I, I can't explain it. Um, and now that they're grown, um, they're 20 and 24. I am just so glad that I had that time with them. I, I just, and I met, I got a chance to meet the most wonderful people and I got it to the chance to expand, add to my current skills, but expand my interests. I got, you know, really into uh interested in into politics and um and have done a lot in that area that I would never be able to do if I was just working 60 80 100 hours a week doing people's taxes only um that's all I would have ever been able to do and I've been able to expand my interests and the things that I'm involved in um two things that are very meaningful to me so, and yet I'm still able to, to use the skills and use my CPA license, all the things that I've done, I've been able to really do a variety of things. And, um, and, and so the advice that I give to any woman, even if you're not thinking about, I mean, it's hard to think when you're 18, 19, 20, it's really hard to think about, oh, my kids, right? That's like, that seems like really far away. Um, when you're choosing a career, and I think it's easier now with the internet and being able to work from home and all that, when you're choosing a career, choose something that you do, you will have the option to step away from and go back into. Um, some things, some careers are a lot harder to do that than others. Um, but I think, like I said, with working from home and today, I think it is easier almost in any field to do that. But I think you really do have to be intentional when you're thinking about your life so that you're not sort of stumbling into it like I did. <laughs> Well, I like that point that you're making there, Wendy, about being intentional. Could you talk about how being a CPA allowed you then to set up some seasonal work uh, that's been fulfilling for you? Oh, yes, absolutely. I, I would love to. I was thinking back on how I did this again without the internet. How did I, how did I even network? And it's been a, obviously a while. So um, back in the, in, in, during that time, you had to, you have to take continuing credit, education credits to keep your CPA license. And I, I had worked so hard to like get that license and pass the test and all that. I wanted to make sure I got my license current. So I would, um, and you couldn't do them online like you can now. So I would go to these seminars um, and you would get, you know, you take basically an all day class and you get hours of continuing ed for that. And so while I was there, I would sort of meet other CPAs in my area and I would just say, hey, you know, I'm looking for 
part-time work uh, during tax season. And here I work for Ernst & Young, here's my story. Um, you know, are you interested in, in uh, hiring a, 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 you know, a, a me as just a contractor? And um, I had a lot of great response because you know, in, in this business, people do have their busy season where they need extra employees during that time only, and they don't wanna hire new people for you know, full time for the whole year. So I was able to um, find, so basically uh, February, March, April, half of April and work maybe 20 hours a week and in, in an office that was local to me. And then I would have one of my mom friends that I had made, um, you know, take care of my kids for, you know, 20 hours a week while I did that. And it was great for them because they were already friends with the kids. And so they were sort of playing. And, and so it was great because it, it, it kept me sort of one foot in the door. Um, and yet I could still, you know, be that mom that I wanted to be and not feel um, so torn, you know, about where, where am I spending my time? And then I got to a certain point where um, when it got to be where you could work from home and you had your computer and you had, you could have software and all that, I decided, you know, I'm just going to get my own clients and work from home. And so um, I started with friends and family, and then they would recommend me to other people. And then, you know, so then it just started, started to grow over, you know, a few years to where I had, and I could decide how many clients I want to take. So if it got to be too many hours and I didn't want to do so much, then I would just, you know, sort of stop taking new clients for a while and then add on as I wanted to. And so that has worked really, really well for me uh, over time. And so, uh, again, I, I highly recommend um, just trying to think out of the box about ways that you can take your career and, and all the work you've done um, and all your experience and use it. It may even be in a completely different way um, than, than what you imagined. So Well, and Wendy, it sounds like part of your success is that you really developed a marketable skill, right? Like yeah. you know, um, on taxes. Uh, so you would yes. really develop this skill. Are there any kind of leadership skills or any other advice you'd give to women on things they might focus on or skills they should learn while they're in college? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously networking is really everything. So um, just sort of, which I would probably have a tendency to do myself if, if I didn't sort of make myself do it. Getting out there, meeting people, letting them know, like I mentioned, hey, I'm looking for work. I'm looking to do this and here's what I can bring to you and, and be confident about your skills. Um, sometimes I think as women, we tend to sort of downplay ourselves like, oh, well, you know, I, 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 I guess I could probably do that, you know. No, you can do it. Be confident in it um, and really put yourself out there. Network a lot, get to know a lot of people, go to as many meetings and different things as, as you can. And you'll be surprised at how sort of these connections, you know, someone else will be like, well, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have that, but I know somebody else who can probably use you. And let me introduce you to this person. And that person introduces you to somebody else. And opportunities really come up and come your way when you do that. No, oh, that's great advice. And as you think about the next few years, uh, as your children are now older, what sort of season are you in? What work are you doing? Um, and how has kind of your earlier prepared you to this for this phase in life? Oh, yeah. So it's really exciting. Um, you know, I, I got to that point um, where both my kids are grown and, you know, pretty much out of the house. And my daughter goes to the College of Charleston right now, actually. So she's really close by and we still see her a lot, which I'm happy about. But um, I have sort of um, a much more eclectic resume now. Um, uh, talking about a bad is, um, my husband and I, during all this time, my husband was working in the tech industry, started a tech company. Um, I was sort of advising him on the business end and then we sold it. And then this is a new, uh, after we sold it, it's a con we started a consulting company. So I'm the CFO. He's the nerd. <laughs> I guess I'm an accountant too. So I guess I can't really say that. But anyway, he's the tech guy. I'm the accountant. Um, 
And so you guys are a good uh, pair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, anyways, we kind of tease each other about both being nerds in our own way. But uh, so anyways, he, he, he's doing that. And, and I, so I've, I've got, I've got sort of that now, not just being a, a CPA tax accountant, but I'm, I'm CFO. And at the same time, I've gotten involved. Um, I have really a passion for politics, especially state politics here in South Carolina, because um, I think there, I, like I mentioned, I grew up in an area that, that wasn't, wasn't great. And I saw um, how sometimes policies, although maybe they are well-meaning, they actually are hurtful to people. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would like, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for things here in South Carolina through Palmetto Promise and through other activism that I'm doing to have things like school choice, parental bill of rights, things like that, that just really empower parents and for kids to get a great education because um, without a great education, you, you are really disabled in life. I mean, you just, we're really doing a disservice to a lot of kids here in South Carolina and um, it's not fair to them. So I, I think that in South Carolina, we can get some of these great things done. And so I have a passion for that and I can use some of my skills to help with that. And over time, through my activism, I guess you would say, I have had the opportunity to network with a lot of people, um, especially political figures in South Carolina and actually nationally known political figures. I've had a chance and been forced to stand up and give presentations, which I'd never dreamed. I, I mean, here I am like, you know, I'm a numbers person, right? So um, that's such a good skill to develop. Huge skill. And, you know, I, the first few times I was absolutely terrified, but it's just one of those things that the more you do it, the more you get used to it, the less scary it is, but it is something that um, is very important to learn. So I've been sort of forced out of my bubble to do that. And so now I, I have that under my belt. And, um, and so I have a lot of possibilities um, that I have going forward. And so now I'm also, um, this is a volunteer thing, but I'm the state director for Convention of States here in South Carolina, which requires me to manage many volunteers, manage legislative um, strategy, work closely with the state senators and representatives and the attorney general and and so um, again, nothing I went to school for really, but just things that um, I'm adding to my skill level while doing it. And it's been, it's been great. And so don't be afraid. And matter of fact, not, don't, don't just be afraid, not be afraid, but actually seek out other opportunities to expand your skills and, your, and, and things that maybe you never thought you would do. But if you can find something that is really meaningful to you, even if it's not what you went to school for, Try to incorporate it, you know, a little bit, little bit by bit into your life. And, um, you know, because when you're 18, 19, 20 years old, you think your life's going to go on a certain track, you know, but you should be open to many, many possibilities. Yes. And what, Wendy, those great words of advice, what legacy do you hope to leave? Well, you know, for my kids, I, number one, want them to understand that, um, you know, they were loved and prioritized by me. I mean, I, and I don't want them to ever feel that I sacrificed my career for them because that, that's really not what happened. I mean, I, I, it was my privilege to be their mom. I mean, I'm not saying it, everything was wonderful all the time. And, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, it wasn't hard. They're definitely not gonna lie. There are hard parts to it, of course, just like anything worth doing, there are challenges. Um, but, uh, it, just being a mother, it's just the greatest thing you can do. It's something that no man can ever do. You know, it's just, it's something special that women have. And I think that should be celebrated and, and cherished. And we should be proud of that and never feel that that is a burden to us. That is a blessing. And, you know, I am 49 years old. My children are grown. I have 20, 25 more years to work and do all of these other things that I want to do. And, and so I don't feel that I've missed 
anything at all. You know, I've, I've only gained new experience and experiences and felt, um, you know, this amazing love to, of, you know, having my children just look to me and, and, and not look to anybody else, you know, it, to raise them and, and comfort them and love them that, um, that I was, I was there when they got off the bus so that, you know, they weren't just going to daycare to someone who just didn't really love them, you know, when they got off the bus from school. And, and when my daughter would come home uh, frustrated about a boy or, you know, a friend drama or homework or whatever, you know, I was there to talk her through it. And I was there to, you know, give her my life wisdom on it. So, um, and I wasn't so exhausted by the end of the day that I didn't have the energy to do it. So. I think the other legacy that I want to have, you know, especially for my daughter is that I don't think she needs me to tell her that she can do whatever she wants. I think in this day and age, we know that as women, you know, we don't need um, to see an example in front of us of my daughter's going to college Charleston for geology. That's the farthest thing from anything that I would ever consider doing. I'm, I said, oh, you find that interesting. She said, yeah. So, okay, great. You know, go for it. Um, and she thinks accounting is boring, you know, so, uh, but um, never to be afraid to try something new, never be afraid to fail. Failure is fine as long as you learn from it, as long as you can, can be honest with yourself and say, okay, what could I have done differently? Even if the failure really was due to an outside force, there's always something you can learn about a way that you can handle it. Maybe you did everything right and you can say, okay, well, I would just probably do the same thing next time. But maybe there is something that you can do differently. And that's totally fine. None of us is going to go through life without trying and failing. If you're not failing, that means you probably didn't try and you just stayed safe. And that really doesn't get you anywhere. So, so I, I think that's what I, I just want. I just, I, I, I never want my daughter to feel that, that, because I think that right now in our culture, there's this idea that motherhood is a burden. And I don't ever want her to believe that, to think that, um, that they were a burden in any way to me or that their children will ever be a burden. It's, it's just a, it's an unbelievable joy to, to have a child. I highly recommend it. <laughs> well, Wendy, I think your approach to motherhood will really speak to a lot of the women in new and it's a sharp contrast from what you hear in the, the narratives um, out there a lot of times. I know I've been writing a fair amount uh, following BuzzFeed, and it seems like BuzzFeed has something against motherhood because they just keep running story and story over and over again uh, about the you know negative side and some of the challenges of, of motherhood without uh, including, as you mentioned, the joys of motherhood as well. So I- And they don't write the stories about- there. Yeah, where are the stories about the challenges of a, you know, of a career? There are plenty of challenges there. Exactly, exactly. Well, you've given so many uh, good pieces uh, of advice. I really appreciate that. And want to end uh, by giving you the opportunity to share for to our students some podcasts or books or any resources you would uh, recommend that they listen to or or read. Okay, well, uh, let's see. If you are really nerdy and love economics like I do, I, I recommend reading Thomas Sowell, Walter Williams. Um, I really like to, for podcasts, I listen to the Megyn Kelly podcast uh, quite a bit. She always has a lot of, it's not all politics. She has a lot of interesting, diverse guests on there. And she's a pretty straightforward uh, person. And, um, and she also has, made some changes in her career for her children, which she does talk about as well. Um, so I think that, you know, it, there's so much to listen to and there's so much information, it's really hard to boil it down. So I guess my, my advice would be to go to look at as many sources as you can and then try to delve down into it a little bit and just find out the truth for yourself and don't ever just rely on one source or one person. Just try to big, find out, you know, the truth for yourself and talk to as many people as you can. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for joining us and for your friendship to the Network of Enlightened Women. We really appreciate it. Happy to do it.